What's up, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of the Falcons in Focus podcast. I'm Scott Baer. That's Tori McElhaney, the man of the hour, new Falcons mm-hmm. defensive coordinator, Ryan Nielsen. Now, before we get to all the uh, why did you want to come here stuff, Tori has a very pressing question. Yeah, very so pressing question for you. in our research, which we prep, this is what we, we do. do. This is our job. I ran across a quote from you. It may have been when you were 17 years old, but... It said, I'm going to live in SoCal my whole life, and I'm going to major in business. I never said that. <laughs> it's it's quoted. quoted. No, no, no. That, that wasn't me. That was some other guy. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, you know, what would you tell that kid now uh, that you're sitting here today as the defensive coordinator? There's the a lot more out there. <laughs> there's a lot more out there. So, yeah. And back in high school, you were a three-sport athlete. Mm-hmm. MVP of your league in basketball, a pretty darn good pitcher from what I hear, and a football player. Why would you ultimately end up going the football route? So um, it was my favorite sport out of all three. Really? Um, I grew up doing all three, and so I just kind of stayed with it through high school. My parents were really big on to, you know, don't put, you know, everything into football. You know, do other things. And, mm-hmm. and I think that helped in the long run, you know. Um, you know, you meet more people, you have more teammates, and, you know, you just experience a whole bunch of different things playing different sports. And so I think it helped in the in the end. Mm-hmm. I definitely picked the right sport. Yeah. Um, things turned out well. <laughs> probably I was the best at that one, too, so it's probably why I liked it the right. most. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> That's fantastic. Now, going uh, fast-forwarding a little bit to, like, making the decision to kind of put your eggs in the football basket, mm-hmm. I was reading about one of your – recruiting visits with um, USC coach John Robinson Mm -hmm. and said that he came to your house, I believe, to watch the FSU Florida National Championship. Is that correct? Is that is that story correct? And what was that day like? Yeah, so funny story. Mm -hmm. Part of that side story that no one knows is the defense line coach at the time and coach Robinson has actually stopped for dinner before they got to my house. Mm hmm. And stopped in a place where I lived, and my mom had spent the majority part of the day preparing this feast. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, and at the so time, didn't I didn't come hungry, well, is what you're saying. Well, exactly. <laughs> so, at the time, I really didn't know. I, I found out that later. And so, I just remember sitting at the table, and they're just slowly eating, you know, <laughs> trying to put it down, you know. And, and sure enough, they both cleared their plate. But I, I look back at that, I'm like, man, if I only, would only knew. You know? The things you do for recruiting trips, you know. Yeah. You, you've been a college coach. You oh, know that's how right. it is. Oh, yeah. you got it. I mean, if they put a plate of food in front, you have to eat you it, You have right? to eat it. There's no choice. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, man. So, what was that day like, though? They're slow eating, and then is that the same time that y'all watched the national championship Yeah, together? so the game was on, and, and Coach was talking just about future and everything, and, and I really like Coach uh, Robinson. Mm-hmm. Like, we just had a good connection. Um, and it was so close to, to uh, my house, campus was. Mm-hmm. And so I was going down there. You know, they had basketball games and things like that, and I went to the baseball – couple of baseball games, in you know, in the recruiting process and spent a lot of time with them. And so – you know, I, I felt very comfortable with him. And it was just, I mean, it was really just, hey, coach, you know, I'd like to come. Oh, really? And okay. what he said to me is, uh, he goes, we gave your scholarship away. No. Oh, no. <laughs> just like that. And I looked at him. He goes, no, 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 I'm kidding. You're all right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> so Heart from, sinks. <laughs> from what I heard, he also gave you some instructions, some homework. Yeah. And that was to have your mom pack a heavy lunch to try to gain some weight. Yeah, I mean, look, that, that, that story gets – embellished i mean come on like, <laughs> i mean it's just it was You're lunch seven you know meals I mean? per day right yeah i mean whoever wrote that or whatever it was it wasn't accurate uh-huh. just like the southern cal uh comment that <laughs> yeah. apparently somebody uh-huh. made you uh-huh. know about me uh-huh. um that's funny you guys bringing it up <laughs> uh, yeah look i ate a lot of food i mean what do you want me to say <laughs> you're a defensive lineman that's, that's what right. you gotta do that's part of being a defensive lineman that's right. eating a lot of food. i mean i was some skinny kid that had to put some weight on just like everybody else you know right. the, Give them some food and fatten them up a little bit. Right. That's Heck, you see it now, even right. in, with these guys, Yeah, all, as old as they are. <laughs> what tw- A ripe 21 years old. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I think I saw, I think it was with, from Chris Richard, there was mm-hmm. a quote that, like, what was college Ryan like? And Chris said he's exactly like uh, yeah. New Orleans Saints slash defensive coordinator coach Ryan Nielsen. Is yeah. Like. Um, so uh, Chris and I were in the same recruiting class. Right. So it was very unique. Um, I've known him for a long time, and and 
you know, we talked about passion earlier mm-hmm. about football and about the game. It's just this is how I feel. It's it's you know, I, I think football without passion is not worth playing. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to be passionate to play the game, in my opinion, to be good at it. You know, and you got to put it's a lot of hard work. I mean, it really is. And, and if you're more passionate, you, you have more energy, you're just going to be better at it. You're, mm-hmm. you're more invested, you know, and so that's how I was as a player. And so it just kind of I went through, you know, some learning learning curve and a mm-hmm. process of getting where we are here today but I think the the foundation you know was was the same when you know when I went to school um, really in high school to where we are right now that's really interesting because something that you said is football is in me mm-hmm. and I love that idea of, of you know here you are as a young kid going into college and, and you played multiple sports did multiple things was there a moment where you were like this is who I am. Football is who I am. This sport is what I want to do with my life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's my senior year and I'm walking off the practice field and Ed Ogeron was uh, the position, my position coach. Mm-hmm. Right. And um, <clears throat> so we're walking off and Norm Chow was the offensive coordinator at the time. And so mm-hmm. between um, uh, Ed and Norm, you know, we're kind of going back and forth and all of a sudden like, you know, because Ed had talked to me about coaching and getting graduate assistant and that type of deal. And, and I was like, yeah, I was really not into it at that particular – I thought I was going to play football in the National Football League for 15 years and then right off into the sunset, you know, like yeah. every kid. So, um, so I remember with um, – we're going in – we're pr- uh, playing in the Vegas Bowl against Utah. And before we went to Vegas, uh, Norm just put his arm around me and he goes, you know, you should try this coaching thing out. Mm-hmm. And right then I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this coaching thing out. And so after that, I um, did a couple other things, and I started playing arena football. And one of the coaches on staff got the head job at University of Idaho. And uh, Pete called me up, Pete, Pete, uh, Coach Carroll, and Ed called me up and said, hey, you really need to take this job. This will be a great you know, introduction to what coach- coaching is and everything. And so uh, about a month later, I packed up a U-Haul, drove, drove from uh, Southern California to Moscow, Idaho, and here we are. Man. Yeah, and – uh, did they happen to mention when they were selling you on this job that it was going to be no sleep and long hours and driving across the country and, and doing recruiting trips? Like, did they clue you in on that part? Yeah, of once we get these headsets off and we can visit outside, I'll yeah. tell you really what that first yeah. day was like. <laughs> so, no, I mean, it, look, the, f- the beginning of it was it was such a learning experience. Sure. And you go to a place like that and you really learn. And this was, this was my first time. You know, I did some director of football operations work and some flight work, and, you know, I was breaking tape down. And, and I mean, it was just great to see how the, the whole thing operated. Mm-hmm. And I had a little piece of everything, and it really built the foundation of, you know, how to, how to manage all of these different things um, and still, you know, get results of everything that you're doing. Um, it, was, it was excellent. It was excellent. I would never change it, change it for anything. Like mm-hmm. it was such a great, uh, that first uh, eight years of coach was mm-hmm. very similar to that, you know, and we didn't have a lot of resources. So right. you really learn how to do more with less. Mm-hmm. Like that's where that came from and de- developing players and the relationships. And we just didn't have that much. And so we spent a lot of time together. And so I, I spent a lot of time with the players and the coaches on the staff. Um, so it was, it was really great. That first year was awesome. Mm-hmm. To that end, when you kind of look back over the course of your career, you've been at pretty much every level. You coached at every level that mm-hmm. there is to coach, essentially, within this game. But is there something that is consistent that you take with you every at every level of the game? Something, whether it's in coaching and teaching, what would that be? Relationships. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's the most important thing to me. Um relationships with the players and the, and the assistant head coach and at this you know level the owner mm-hmm. you know, I look forward to meeting Mr. Blank um, and the general manager uh, Terry which we have a relationship already but then you know with all the players I mean that's that's to me that's where it's at and you know we're we're gonna win a lot of football games we like to you know um, but the, re- the relationships last you know and, and I've got guys that um, have coached with me now that I coached back in 2000 eight in mm-hmm. 2009 mm-hmm. you know and so that's you know a lot of guys I still talk to and, and find out what they're doing and and uh, that's I really like that part of the game 
you know, yeah. we, we spend so much like, we spent so much time together, and the NFL season is so long. If you don't like the people that you're working with, ah, that makes it hard. Yeah. Now. You know, and so when you get to know somebody and you get to know it's, you know, and, and we're all working for a common goal. I mean, that's that's where it becomes really fun. Yeah, yeah and it's it seems like uh, you and uh, and uh, Cam Jordan seem to be tight. Now, we normally don't talk about Saints on this podcast, yeah. but <laughs> it seems like such an interesting dynamic. His tweet was fantastic yeah, that, that, said, that, that he's what? Uh, wish him the semi-best as he <laughs> willingly went to the Falcons. Happy-ish for him yeah. was, was what he said. So first and last time we'll talk about this, right? So <laughs> let's get this out of the way. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, my relationship cam is is very strong now yeah. um at first when i was coming from college and he would played six years in the league when i went into those meetings it was like super bowl sunday every meeting because they were challenging everything that we were doing in a good way like yeah. they wanted to know the why and and look he played in the league for at that time six years and you know they had a decent group of players in that room um and it was explaining and teaching and coaching and he just bought into what we were doing and then he had a little bit of success. And so success sells. Mm -hmm. And so then he was in, and we just kept tweaking and working together. And, and um, I'm appreciative of Cam. I really mm -hmm. am. Like, our relationship now is is fantastic. And, I mean, he called as soon as it came out. You know, he was mad at me that I didn't tell him before. <laughs> and I said, listen, I can't tell you that, but I appreciate you calling me. So yeah. it was good. Man, someone else who I'm interested about your relationship with is Ed Ordron. Mm -hmm. We are in SEC country. Sure. A lot of people know about Ed Ordron. What was he to you in your early days of coaching? And even you played for him, too. Yeah, great mentor. Mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a phenomenal mentor. I, I owe him so much um, in my career. I really am appreciative and thankful for all the things that he's helped me with and taught me. And um, so playing for him for four and a half years, that was an experience. All right. <clears throat> and then moving to coaching for him, that was another experience. And so I got both sides of the spectrum. And, and when we were at Ole Miss together for those three years, we didn't win a lot of games, but the amount of, uh, teaching and, and NFL coaches and coaches that had come through the building to teach, you know, Alex Gibbs came down yeah. there and he spent, you know, really three years. Uh, springs with mm -hmm. us you know eight times seven times and I was fortunate enough as a young coach I'm 25 or 26 I'm sitting there and I'm listening to his run game and I'm like this mm -hmm. is unbelievable and Monty Kiffin mm -hmm. and Norm Chow came and I mean so all these coaches had come through the building and you just try to learn so much um, I didn't really realize how good it was until I left right like the amount of information that was in that building mm -hmm. was so I mean it was awesome and so then when I left I look back on it I'm like man I learned so much in those three years mm -hmm. and so um yeah I mean I'm, I'm very appreciative to him we have a good relationship we really do and I you know when you know we were down there I take my family up to see him and that was pretty cool mm -hmm. you know now I got kids and things like that and yeah. so he's holding my baby you know which is like <laughs> wait a minute now yeah. like, hold on <laughs> like, wait yeah <laughs> And, and uh, right. you speak Coach O's language. Like, you can understand when he oh, speaks. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Now, before we wrap up, I did want to – this was a quote that I – that was from Larry Holder with I The just Athletic. Lo I love this quote. It's the uh, – our podcast listeners have already heard it because I said it the last time that yeah. we ha we were on um, our Falcons and uh, Final Whistle podcast. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of the crux of who – you know, this is our first time meeting, but it's kind of the crux of who I believe you to be as a coach. But – it was Carl Granderson who was talking, and he said, Coach Nielsen coaches us pretty hard. He wants us to be big, nasty D linemen so we can play out there and destroy people. You have to have tough skin to play D line for the New Orleans Saints. Yeah. Is that who you are, and is that what Falcons fans can expect of you here in Atlanta? Yeah, absolutely. I think the first, the first thing is the relationship part. Mm -hmm. And so players don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Right. And so that's the first part of God, it. That's so right? good. Yeah. And so um, just even, you know, talking to our guys, you know, here in Atlanta and just starting that process and hearing the energy and just the tone of their voice, that excites me. All right. And so that's the beginning of it. And then once they understand who we are, then we can push them to be, and, and it's very simple, we, we're pushing you to be your abs absolute best. Mm -hmm. You know, and how we play defensive line, how we play, you know, in the Falcons defense. You know, that's really important. And the players got to understand that we're, it's not always going to be, you know, roses. You know, there's going to be right. some tough times mm -hmm. and, and tough coaching, you know, because, um, look, they're human. 
you know, they're not going to feel their best every day, but it's our job to help them get to their best and then yeah. surpass that. And so that's really the philosophy of what, it, just what I believe. And, and I know, you know, Coach Smith is along the same lines. And, mm -hmm. and um, but in terms of big and physical and nasty, that's just a product of, you know, all of those other things that we just talked about. All right. Now we are on to rapid maybe fire. Rapid fire. Okay. Every, everybody gets the same five questions. Except not really, though. Right. We have tailored it a yeah, little bit. Yeah, we've tailored it a little bit. To fit you, because normally we have play. This is a player focused podcast, so okay. congratulations. Is that how you're, you view me? Well, you're, you're a, a player, uh -huh. like kind of a slim, little bit. Yeah. Right? <laughs> fit. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. In shape, ready to go. Whatever That's you need right. to tell yourself. Yeah, okay, look, I'll take it all right now. <laughs> okay, you ready? Yes. Okay, what is your favorite play of your playing career or your coaching career? So we're playing at Philadelphia this year, and they were. Uh, fourth and run, running that sneak mm -hmm. play. You know, that it, it, they got a sneak on everybody. And so we coached it. The players bought into it. And sure enough, they ran it. And we, we stopped it. I mean, and the sideline and the players, <laughs> you go back, you look at it. It was unbelievable. I told the guys it was my favorite play of my career. Wow. Not, a sneak. Yeah. You know what I mean? A, uh -huh. a sneak. That's you know? amazing. Because oh. it, was, it was all 11. It was all the guys. But it took yeah. everybody on defense. There wasn't, you know, like a corner could make a play, you know, PBU or mm -hmm. a D-line, get a sack or a linebacker can run through a hole. This took, you know, all 11. You know, and I know it takes all 11 all the time. Right. But when right. you really watch the play, everybody's straining, everybody's pushing, and it was, it was awesome. Sometimes the mundane is the most – Fun and important thing. Yeah, you know, to, you know like, yeah, absolutely. The sacks and the touchdowns and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. But it's it's the little things. Uh -huh. yeah. You know, that's what the, that's what wins the little things. And that helped that play helped us win because it was, the ball was on their side, mm -hmm. and so we got the ball back and punted it down and played field position. So, yeah. uh, what is your favorite TV show or movie? Uh, I'm not a TV guy. Um, that's why we changed it to movie because we <laughs> thought maybe you're not a TV guy. So uh, look, this is a long like. Last of the Mohegans oh, is that a great is a good movie. movie. Yeah, um, and then uh, I mean, how do you not like Jerry Maguire? I know. You know, I mean, those <laughs> right, two—they're yeah. just classics, right? Oh, yeah. And so, like, if you're forcing me, it's uh -huh. probably you know one of those two. Yeah. Okay, I like it. Those yeah. are two classics. One hundred percent. Now, who was your favorite player growing up? Could be baseball, basketball. Bo Jackson. Okay, yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, multi-sport. I mean, it's just right at the right time. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's too bad he got injured because. Man, what a talent. I yeah. mean, what a football player. You and a baseball. I mean, you really right, was. Yeah. So. What is one word that you would use to describe your defensive mindset? Aggressive. Aggressive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it. All right, last one. What is your biggest pet peeve? <sighs> I know. I'm older now, so those things aren't like. <laughs> <laughs> aren't top of mind. We've but, had a lot of really good ones. Yeah. God, I, you know what? I. I'm not. I really. I'm. I'm kind of stumped. Out. Like biggest pet peeve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. See, like, I have a problem with. Uh, I'm a really like. You talk about aggressive. I'm not an aggressive driver, but no one wants to meet me out on the road. Like it's not fun for anybody, myself included. Yeah. I get mad really. Yeah. You know, be honest with. Like I don't have like one. Uh, you one thing. Yeah. I mean, I think when I was younger, it was you know, um, if you weren't early. Uh -huh. That kind of was like, ah, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm an yeah. early guy, so, yeah, you know, right. I'm in the building early. And if you weren't, I'm like, ah, what, you know, why mm -hmm. you bring it in the afternoon paper? And it's like <laughs> 7 o'clock, you know what I mean? So, Well, thank you very much for yes, stopping by. You. This was an awesome episode of Falcons in Focus. I'm Scott. That's Tori. Mm -hmm. That's Ryan. So glad to meet you. Thank Falcons you. fans are so pumped for their new defensive coordinator. Can't wait to see you on the field. And we will come back to you next time with another great guest. See you.